Welcome, 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 people, to the show. Today we have a very special guest. I'm chilling on his couch right now. It's, as you can see, uh, it's very cozy over in San Francisco. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, you want to kind of introduce yourself, give yourself a little introduction here? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm Shay Chancellor. I worked on some Bitcoin Cash protocol development for from like 2017 to... Like early 2019, um, been a software engineer for a long time, and uh, I'm really excited about cryptocurrency in general. I'm trying to work on some other like non non protocol related topics right now um, with uh, Harry Barber and some other guys. Uh, hmm. Hopefully, hopefully that'll turn out good. Gotcha. So, uh, when did you first get in? You said into crypto. I actually got in. Well, I read the white paper like pretty early on. But I was like, eh, I don't know, that'll work. <laughs> and, uh, and then, like, early, like, probably like May of 2016, I like I knew Omri from uh, other other endeavors, and uh, he came by my apartment and actually sat at the table behind me and explained to me how Bitcoin could scale. And I was like, well, if Omri uh, believes it can scale, like, you know, and he broke down exactly how technically it could be done. Um, Hell, are you doing? You're like <laughs> moving all over the place. Like, like hey, hello, dude. sir. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I was gonna try a French accent, but I don't know if that's gonna go well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how a Bitcoin can scale. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, he uh, he was working on scaling at the time, and and I was convinced by like his technical arguments. Um, and then he sent me some videos of Roger Ver uh, talking about um, basically uh economic calculation problem and i was like oh that's interesting i never heard about this when they taught communism in college they did not explain <laughs> that uh you cannot figure out what price things should be like that's pretty important detail um so that pretty drastically changed my opinion of things um i got really excited about it uh, a little bit later on that year like josh ellithorpe uh zquest was also somebody that i know from san francisco uh, and he got really excited about it and, and got me involved uh, a little bit later after that, even more. So, like, those kind of serendipitous connections yeah. to other individuals kind of pulled me right into the into what was happening. Yeah, for lack of a better word, they're kind of towards the center of the Bitcoin Cash Network. So, kind of, what, what, what time was this? This is, like, 2017, you said? Yeah, it was um, early 2017, like, all throughout the summer when that was happening. Yeah. Um, and then, like, right up into the fork, and then I started trying to commit patches to Bitcoin ABC and kind of help out Omri with that. Gotcha. Uh, and then uh, when did you kind of make your exit from ABC? Uh, I stopped being, stopped actively working as part of ABC in December of 2018. And then, like, I was still uh, contributing things here and there as I had time uh, up until, I don't know, May. Like that, I haven't. I haven't. It's not the, so much that I am opposed to contributing. I just I'm, I'm working on other things right now that I think are more important for like uh, actual adoption. Um, uh, in my free time, what what free time I have? <laughs> uh, care to share any of that with us? Any... The what what we're working on? Or... Yeah, or oh, I'd love to. Yeah, um, chill it. Uh, if you if you read like Hal Finney's early talks about. Uh, like his reusable proof of work project. And he discusses how um, you can like exchange messages back and forth by you know sharing these uh, these essentially hashes that are proof of work, and it doesn't cost people that are communicating back and forth anything. But if you're a spammer that wants to like send a message to a bunch of different people you would have to spend an inordinate amount of time computing work in order to be able to send messages to you know thousands of people at the same time and in many ways bitcoin actually is the functional version of reusable proof of work that hal finney envisioned the actual bitcoins themselves represent some amount of proof of work that happened in the past and so if you could attach those to messages 
you could have a messaging system. Like imagine if every email had some Bitcoins attached to it. So I send you an email and it's got $10 of Bitcoins on it and your inbox is sorted by amount that was paid. Spammers are not going to pay $10. If you like what I said to you, you reply, you include $9.99 back, and we're able to have a conversation like that without um, without spending a whole lot, but we've tied up some funds that sort of uh, represent the re reciprocity between the two of us. Gotcha. And that's actually possible to do on Bitcoin Cash, but the protocols just have not been built out for it. Um, so one of the first things that you need is to be able to look up some contact information for a person from their Bitcoin cash address. Um, so Harry Barber and I have been working on a key server. So basically you would scan someone's uh, Bitcoin QR code or whatever. It would go to this key server network. It would pull down a blob with all this metadata that your wallet has put into the key server network. It verifies the signature. So it verifies that the actual wallet that owns that address has produced this payload of metadata. And then you, your wallet could actually take that, get all the contact info for the person that they revealed, put it in a contact list, get like an email address or get a telegram handle or get like a custom messaging system or get like a stealth payment, you know, messaging system information. And then you could actually send encrypted messages that are uh, encrypted using uh, Bitcoin uh basically Bitcoin ECC, the SECP 256K1 curve, and then for the, the Diffie-Hellman handshake, and then use AES for like a actual encryption. And you can send them a message to whatever message server that they've advertised and actually include on that message a stamp because you already know, because everything is based on Bitcoin uh, private keys and public keys, you already know that they can receive payments. So you can actually include a transaction ID that has a commitment to the message. So you have native encrypted messaging along with this uh, payment system on top of it that allows you to verify that someone actually wants your attention. Um, and it, it basically opens up email again because mm -hmm. we all had kind of like gone to like Gmail and Hotmail and these centralized systems in order to keep spam away, right? And then we we're sort of in these walled gardens. But if we can keep spam away by just paying each other to not spam, then um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential there. Also, some of the other interesting things that you can do once you've uh, established this is you can like pay for uh, API requests. So like there's a lot of uh, APIs on the internet where you like pay per pay per put or pay per post, mm -hmm. but you need to sign up for an account. You need to give them a credit card number and then you need to get a uh, actual token for their API with actually using uh, Bitcoin cash natively. You can just try to do a post. The server can respond with like a BIP 70 invoice. You can pay that invoice, get like a proof of payment token and then proceed to use their API. And you don't need to give them any contact info or any details about yourself. And they don't need a huge complicated backend for doing payment processing and like having an admin interface for you and like all this other stuff. So I think there's a lot of stuff that can be done with Bitcoin Cash um, because it's scalable that people are just not doing. Like everybody is focused on like, I don't know, selling hot sauce on like online stores or whatever, rather than like doing the thing that only Bitcoin Cash can do. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, to sum it up, basically, you can do messaging and anti and also have anti spam measures uh, using Bitcoin Cash with a lot of fancy words that uh, yeah. I barely know. So uh, sounds very interesting. Uh, so you're working on that now is like uh, what's kind of the estimate for when it's going to be coming out? You got any type of ballpark? I, I don't know. Like uh, it's it doesn't make. You know, it's not going to make me any money, so it's like it can't be my primary focus. Yeah. Like I have to pay my rent or whatever. Um, some of you guys know him. Harry Barber has been doing most of the work. He's like a workhorse. He's really excited about the idea, and he's he's been like doing all the prototyping. So we almost have like a, a prototype built on top of Electron Cash, and then he's built a key server in Rust, and like we're gonna try to film a, a little demo here this weekend and like put it out. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, yeah, moving along here a little bit. So, 
Uh, I don't know if you saw this. I, I think I sent this link to you earlier. Uh, but the OK Coin Fund, they hey look at yeah. this. There's you right there. Uh, they, if I remember correctly, what? they were <laughs> looking good. Uh, if I remember correctly, they were like trying to raise money for development for like BTC, BCH, and BSV, but it was like it was tied into how it was basically like an OK Coin fundraiser. So. They're pledging. They pledged to donate a thousand BTC to the devs of all these, and um, they donated <laughs> donated twenty BTC, I guess, out of a uh, a thousand. And so, uh, Bitcoin Cash devs earned eight out of fifty votes cast to split the eventual pledge amount. And so, basically, Amory was saying that it, it's like elevating BSV into a position of like legitimacy when we all know what like bsv is and it's um um <laughs> oh i didn't see this looking forward to the now and thanks for your voicing your thoughts on this now and not want to reach out about august and september uh but yeah i was so like uh, one thing that you wanted to talk about a lot is funding right and so like yeah that's been an issue it's been a hot topic within uh bitcoin cash specifically for a while now and basically it's like who's gonna who's going to fund the devs, right? Cause, uh, everybody, a lot of people probably know about the Bitcoin.com fundraiser, which raised a bunch of money. And then it kind of got like locked up for some like legal reasons. It was like some KYC type thing. I was very convoluted. Uh, it, yeah, it is. It was interesting, but, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, what, so we'll start with a different coin. Uh, what do you think of Dash's funding model where part of the, uh, block reward goes towards, whatever the community, the, the stakeholders, uh, master nodes vote on. Like, do you think this is a way to a good way to fund an open source project? Uh, I, no, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think it's a good idea at all. Um, I think that dash, uh, you know, people say that dash has solved the funding problem. Um, I mean, you could say the Zcash has solved it also. Um, but I, I don't think pre-allocating some of the block reward as part of the consensus rules is really a way to solve uh, funding problems. I think that um, that r is really revealing as to who actually owns the protocol in those cases. Right. Um, right. The funding goes somewhere. And in, I believe in Dash's case, then the master nodes vote for where the funds go afterwards, but the master nodes, like the threshold to be a master node is rather arbitrary. At one point in time, it was very cheap to become a master node. So a lot of the master nodes are like OG dash people. Um, you know, you have no idea who they are. It's not Sybil proof. Like the threshold is supposed to prevent you from being able to Sybil the network. But in reality, like if you were early into dash, and you reach that threshold for having a master node, you could be running a ton of different master nodes. Um, also, the voting model uh, with how funds are distributed is uh, kind of questionable about how it allocates funds. Like it doesn't it doesn't allocate funds efficiently. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, because um, I mean, it's basically a bureaucracy at that point. Um, it's like, oh, who are you going to get votes from to get your funds? And like, obviously. Um, back to just like a simple libertarian principle, a government will never like vote to make its power less. Like they always are going to want more. So yeah, that's just. And, and I think that that is proven to be the case with Dash. I don't know. I don't follow them too closely because I don't like their funding model. If I did, I would just you know go pay attention to the Dash. <laughs> but I really don't like it at all. So I haven't I haven't followed any drama over there. But um, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot to question with the way they've done things. I don't think they've solved funding by any means um, beyond like the uh, sort of solidifying who is in power within inside the Dash network. Gotcha. Um, so, what uh, what do you know about the Bitcoin.com fundraiser? Uh, I don't know if you've looked at it closely. Um, kind of the issues between um, ABC specifically receiving funds from that. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I know that Bitcoin.com ran a fundraiser. Yeah. I know that they collected a little over, what, 800 BCH. 
Um, yeah, no, like it's, it's 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 like that's not a bad way to do funding. I don't. I, don't, I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think it's actually preferable in many ways. But it sounds like maybe there's some problems with uh, uh, administration of the funds, not just by Bitcoin.com, but possibly by you know, other people. So I don't know. Gotcha. Uh, one Can't thing. Really speak to that. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, one thing you did message me is that Bitcoin D is an ideal public good. Uh, so as far as my normie understanding, Bitcoin D is basically the 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 daemon, the software that runs in the background that kind of keeps all of the Bitcoin yeah. stuff running. Yeah. So a, a lot of um, that's relevant because a lot of people think that the developers should form some kind of company and like somehow like take investments um but if you're taking on investments that implies you're going to give a return on investment which means that you have something to sell Mm. um but bitcoin d as part of the market needs to be free and open uh open source so that people can verify that it is doing what people say it's doing like the developers say it's doing and that people can copy it and modify it where relevant. Um, and also that anyone can participate in mining that wants to. Hmm. So given those requirements, that makes Bitcoin D an ideal public good. Um, I mean, we just look at the definition of a public good. Um, it's a public a public good is a good that is both non exclusive excludable like you can't exclude somebody from being able to use it and non rivalrous and that individuals cannot be excluded from use or could be enjoyed without paying for it and where use by one individual does not reduce availability to others or the goods can be effectively consumed simultaneously by more than one person so like this a uh, public good doesn't truly exist in the real world but with respect to software and specifically open source, like a lot of it is an ad- ideal public good. Like there are things that are almost public goods in reality, but software is an ideal public good. And, and in particular, like Bitcoin D meets that definition. And so because of that, you end up with market failure because there's nothing that you can't exclude people from using it, which means that you can't wait until they've given you some money to give them access to it. So you can't form a market like you can't find you can't figure out what the price of Bitcoin D should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of that, you need some other means to produce Bitcoin D. And like, I don't think from what I've seen and what I've looked at in history that like that human beings have a good way to solve this problem. Like, how do you fund public goods? I know that libertarians like to say, like, oh, well, somebody, private corporation will do X, Y, Z as part of um, their, like, normal operations. And that's certainly true in the case of, like, Linux, for example, where you have Google and Facebook and Intel and all these different companies that depend on Linux as a public good, and they all invest in it because of that. Mm -hmm. But... You got to talk like if you think about the actual amount of economic uh, activity that's running over Linux, it's significantly bigger uh, impact-wise than Bitcoin Cash is right now. Like if all of the commerce on the internet was running on Bitcoin Cash, like yeah, probably Amazon and like Coinbase and these other companies would take the time to hire engineers to contribute to it. But at the level of economic activity that we're at right now. That's not the case. So, what's the solution? Uh, there is <laughs> there aren't really good ones, right? Like, I think, from my perspective, the reason I got into Bitcoin Cash is an I- ideological one. I, you know, I heard Roger Ver talking about voluntarism, mm-hmm. and um, I think as many things as possible should be voluntary. Hmm. Sorry. Your dog, all right? Yeah, and there's got that one back there. Uh, yeah, keep going. Sorry. Just saying. Um, as many things as possible should be voluntary, and uh, within that community, there's this idea that taxation is is theft. Um, that's true, 
unless you are taxing yourself. Mm-hmm. You're taxing, if you're taxing yourself. yourself, right? You are no longer you are no longer committing theft. And I think that voluntarists and libertarians and anarcho-capitalists need to acknowledge that within their ideology, there's still this problem of public goods mm-hmm. that they are personally responsible for solving. Mm-hmm. And so as uh, a person that is governing themselves, that they should figure out what level of taxes that they are willing to pay and start contributing those things, that, that, that money to projects that they believe will make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. And so people question my use of the word tithe before, but fundamentally that's what it was. Right? Like that's what a tithe is, is where you're taxing yourself and you're giving it to a public good to try to make the world a better place. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Does that answer your yeah. question? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, um, I mean, basically it's like voluntary. Like obviously nobody can be like coerced into into giving anybody money and that's kind of if you were doing part of the block reward that's essentially what would be happening but if it's uh if you say if it's like voluntary um that would solve problems so i guess this would have to like come from the big rich whales essentially to, to have them make an impact but i mean it could just be like a mass. maybe maybe it doesn't it doesn't really take that much actually like i don't i don't know what the current user base of bitcoin cash is but i i mean i don't think I think it would be wrong to expect the whales to contribute a lot of money. I, I don't think they're yeah. going to do it. That's how they got all the money that they have <laughs> in the first place. They just, like they keep it. <laughs> like right. uh, no no fault no fault to them. But the people that actually care about libertarianism and voluntarism and 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 want to see the world uh, have a better future and you know see economic freedom r- really help. Uh, I guess, you know, kids in Africa, as uh, yeah. some people say, uh, those living less on they, should make, they... They, they should make sure that developers are, are funded. But here's the th- I mean, here's even the trickier thing, though, is let's say people did tax themselves. Let's say that, like, I personally, which, which I'm not doing right now, I'll be honest, like, I'm not contributing any money to any of this stuff at this point. Um, let's say I did tax myself because I do have a different job that I'm using to pay my bills. Let's say I did tax myself and I have to figure out who would I give that money to, to, you know, further, uh, voluntarist ideals and like push that into the world and like provide the infrastructure that we need, uh, which specifically, you know, is a monetary system, right. So that we can still calculate, uh, how to allocate resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, who would I give it to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I, I guess whoever you want. <laughs> uh, Absolutely, whoever you want. <laughs> uh, so I did. we did have a question from uh, Reddit earlier. So they said, could you ask Shama to compare the value proposition of being able to grab updates from Bitcoin Core versus going with a different client like BU? I don't quite understand that question. Uh... Each, yeah, so... <sighs> Compare so compare the value proposition of being able to grab updates from Bitcoin Core versus going with like, a different. So I think he's asking like if like a, for ABC going to updates from BU versus Bitcoin Core. Yeah, so or I mean my going dislike, to, or using BU versus ABC. Period. That's like, I don't, that I don't the second one kind of sounds like it. I, I think he's like mad that um, ABC uses updates from Bitcoin Core, but it's one of those things like if they're fixing bugs, whatever. Um, if BU isn't implementing these bug fixes, then why would you use BU? I guess like <laughs> it's free. Well, there's a, there's there's sort of other problems there. Like BU as an organization yeah, it's, is not a software producing organization. It is it has its own constitution, which has uh, some questionable articles in it that are antithetical to the ideas that push Bitcoin cash forward. So like as an organization, they're not voluntarious. They have a government, they vote, they do all this silly stuff, right? Like they're not, they do not represent the ideas that cause Bitcoin cash to come into existence. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're also extremely disorganized. Like they do not go through a rigorous software development process. 
Um, I personally would not use them. I don't think that they really have a reason to exist. I'm to be, like being honest. Like I don't think that they should be producing Node software. And I think the primary export of BU is drama on Reddit. <laughs> um, uh, so with that said, backporting from Bitcoin Core, they do have a rigorous software development process within Bitcoin Core. Now, they do not have the goal of scaling, right? They're just trying to like refactor and fix bugs and whatever they need because they actually are forward porting to Liquid, right? They have another network that is running on a similar code base that they are essentially uh, maintaining in sync with uh, Bitcoin uh, D. And so they're not trying to like improve uh, improve processing speed of transactions or improve um, improve like block processing speed all that much um, because they just don't they don't care about those details um, but there are a lot of bug, good bug fixes that are coming in from Bitcoin core and it takes a lot of work to backport those you can't just you know blindly do it like it's not an automated process you have mm -hmm. to have an engineer pulling those back and and like adapting them because for one we don't we, we didn't bring in segwit and then we have made changes so Anything touching the wallet code in Bitcoin Core, or like any of these other areas, require manual reconciliation in order to use it. But there's been multiple like security vulnerabilities that have been fixed by backporting stuff from Bitcoin Core. Like people don't realize that um, that are relevant to big blocks. Like they wouldn't even necessarily have impacted Bitcoin Core all that much. Um, ideally, we wouldn't need to do that. Ideally, we would be the innovators in the space, and we would be doing all the development and you know maybe people would be porting to bitcoin core from bitcoin abc um, but we just don't have the resources as a community to do that right now mm. yeah um yeah it's just smaller i mean maybe if the price went up like 10 times we might <laughs> or something uh yeah but yeah it's kind of just like do the optimizations that we can and then if core comes out with something that's useful well be stupid to not take it uh so i am watching these chats by the way um i am going to um if you have any questions for shama or me uh feel free to ask them uh somebody did ask which i was going to bring up to you uh have you heard of the bitcoin mining parliament i have i'm very familiar with the person that propose that i don't know the details of it but um i think the basic premise is that people should vote with hash power to decide what's going to be done yeah and like i said you know before i think these voting things are rather silly like if you want to vote you should vote with your money and fund the thing that you want to happen like miners hashing on a value and saying like we want this in the protocol, but then no money going to it is not going to like motivate anyone to do anything. Right. But you had this problem a lot where they would like they would vote on like some protocol thing happening, and but there's no funds attached to it. Like there's no there, there's no nothing to actually cause developers to do anything, uh, or like to be able to eat while they do that thing. It was just like yes, the BU community, which is 22 people at the time blesses the idea of op group therefore developers should go and do it <laughs> never mind that none of the people that voted on it are paying anything to have that done nor do they have the technical expertise to decide whether that's a good idea or not mm -hmm. yeah um i mean to me it, it just kind of reminds me of when all the hash power was voting for um, just like in the in the headers, I think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no commitment either, right? right? Like you don't have to like follow the vote. You can vote for uh, Segwit two X. You could signal for it, and then like do something completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's. I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of what I've gathered. I mean, I'm obviously like at a higher level, not in the weeds with this, but that's kind of what what I've seen. But yeah, I've seen him like always talk about this, and so. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you on this. So, um, fund fund what you want, um, and don't yeah. The, the miners don't have the miners can't force devs what to do, and they kind of could, I guess. Yeah, it's, 
I mean, there's there's definitely trade offs, right? Like users can vote with their feet. Like you don't like Bitcoin Cash, you you can go buy Dash instead. You know, if you're a miner, you don't like Bitcoin Cash, you can mine BTC instead. If you're a dev that you don't want to work on Bitcoin Cash for whatever reason, like you can go somewhere else. Um, so in everything I say, I'm not saying that we should alienate people, not at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that like. There needs to be proper incentives in place to be able to make sure that the changes that people want can actually happen. And then there's also a, a place for uh, technical leaders in the community to be able to say, like, hey, this isn't really a good idea, and here's why. Like, we shouldn't do that. Like, the default position should be uh, one of skepticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So uh, this kind of just ties in. Vitalik sent this out, was it, early this morning. <clears throat> so he says... The original tweet was sometimes the real scarce source is legitimacy. And uh, then he goes into example, Bitcoin prints a hundred million into the hands of miners weekly, whereas printing a hundred mil even once into the hands of developers would greatly accelerate dev. Why not do this? Certainly reasons much more subtle than an extra hundred mil printed causing hyperinflation. Uh, any initial thoughts on this? I think we kind of covered. What sure. I mean, like we, you know, there's an agreement about what Bitcoin cash is to some extent, right? Like people already know they're paying the miners. They're, they're, they're doing this. The um, other thing is if suddenly you printed that money, like who does it go to? Like the developers, like I'm a, you know, I'm a developer. I just yeah. changed the code base, like push it out to all the exchanges. Say like, Hey, exchange, please run this. It's going to pay me a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to send a hundred million dollars in Bitcoin to my <laughs> personal address. Like just trust that I'm going to like develop stuff in the future. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Um, Bitcoin's gonna be good. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a good idea. Like I really, uh, I think that you, like devs have a responsibility to users and the way that that responsibility is manifest is in developers being res like dependent upon users to eat. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like there, there's no easy solution, right? There's all trade-offs, but like there needs to be an actual conversation about like how, how, how these interactions actually should go. Like where, where's the actual uh, incentives in the in uh, interpersonally for Bitcoin to work right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a very sensitive system. Like it is economically based. It is not a bunch of code. Like Bitcoin works because of the incentive system that is that is you know put together there, and the fact that people don't grasp what that system is, like they think that miners should fund devs. It's not the miners' responsibility to fund devs. Like actually, the incentive system within Bitcoin makes it so that it's bad for miners to fund devs. Like miners should not fund developers, like because they're putting themselves at risk versus other miners. Like they're in competition with other miners, and anything that they spend prevents them from investing in more hash. So they're less likely to be a big miner in the future. Mm -hmm. Like anyone that is self-sacrificing in terms of being a miner is like putting themselves out of the game. Right. So it, it really like the only, the only thing that works with Bitcoin is an altruistic idea that you want a currency system that is free from manipulation, that it doesn't have somebody that can just print a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no, it makes sense. If you're, yeah, which, what, what, what type of miner would vote for their money to go towards somebody else? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's a complete. Not me. Yeah, right. It's, it's silly. I mean, that's just, that's just a tax and it's not even taxing yourself. It's taxing. Yeah. I mean, it is taxing yourself, but it's not going towards what kind you of, choose, yeah, right? you're, you're... <laughs> which is kind of defeats yeah. the whole point. Um, and so I did, there was a, a question earlier, is Omri a dictator? Uh, it says that on his Twitter profile. It used to. I think. I think he. Uh, I don't think he liked the optics of it anymore, or something. Oh, did he? Did he take it out? <laughs> yeah, I think it was a couple months ago. He took it out. No, it definitely says benevolent dictator. Oh, it still Bitcoin says that. See right now. All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I guess the answer is yes. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, Omri is a self-proclaimed dictator. I won't argue with that. I mean, maybe he changed it and changed it back. All right. Yeah, it definitely is still there. And NPC extraordinaire. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh do you see i mean is that kind of the way to go as far as like governance goes and open i mean in open source projects it's 
it seems like there's always like a leader of sorts and um, yeah, a dictator. What's kind of your, your thoughts on that? And do you think like competing um, software implementations like ABC versus BCHD, like is, is this? So I talked, I talked yeah. with Vin before. I yeah. don't think that like these other implementations have any real like competitive effect in the market. Right. Every one of these things is itself a, like a, a public good. And there's no market for them to compete in. Uh -huh. And there's a shelling point that all the exchanges and miners need to run the same implementation. Yeah, I, I did actually catch your your talk for that. Cause, yeah, like if you don't so, want, you don't want to be out of sync, basically. Yeah, so you're gonna run the same node and like trying to move to one. Like everybody would have to move in lockstep. But there's no consensus mechanism for doing that. So exchanges and miners run Bitcoin ABC, and that's the long and the short of it. Uh, if people, you know, the only way to get away from that is to launch Bitcoin SV, right? <laughs> and the only way that we were able to get away from Bitcoin Core is to launch Bitcoin Cash. Right. Like, you have to vote with your feet. If you don't like Omri, then like you have to do something else. Um, and so if that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, but like. It is. There's a huge cost to it, right? Like it shouldn't be free, but at the same time, uh, you know, Omri is the best technical leader. Uh, like, he's the probably the best engineer that I've met, and I've been in the Bay Area for quite a while. That's not to say he's always right, <laughs> but he definitely like has a sharp wit, and he's been able to implement the changes necessary. Uh, for Bitcoin Cash to succeed so far. Now, I do not agree with his behavior whatsoever. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I, like, I, I don't. I, I think the actual problem is that Omri is not a benevolent dictator, right? Like that title, that the origination of that title had to do with the creator of Python. Okay. And he didn't claim that title from himself. Teo was given that title by another person, right? No, nobody yeah. gave Omri that title. That is something he slapped <laughs> on his own Twitter profile and his own LinkedIn. Yeah, like he he needs to start practicing, actually being that. And so, when he starts doing that, Bitcoin Cash will start succeeding. People will start putting their money back in. Like, really, the price of Bitcoin Cash, in my opinion, and like, because I know I exhibit this behavior, and I know that a lot of other people I've talked to exhibit this behavior, is that in reality, like, buying big, buying a cryptocurrency is a vote of confidence in the development team. Mm -hmm. So, and if you have a leader that that pushes away every single other person, then you're counting on that one individual doing all the hard technical work. Mm -hmm. Right, and in reality, like you need a lot of people to donate their time, and their money, and their resources, and you need somebody in a leadership position that can take all of that and bring it together, and can like multiply it, you know, like create a synergistic effect where what people give him are actually is actually like multiplied mm -hmm. in some way. So the the thing you don't agree with agree with is the benevolent part, not the dictator part. I don't think he's even a dictator. I think he's really focused on doing individual contributions. Like I don't, I don't think that he's acting uh, as a as a maintainer of a project. Gotcha. I don't think he's, I don't think he's doing that role, um, and that's a big part of why I stopped uh, stopped participating. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, uh, there's some juicy stuff for all for all SV trolls. Uh, anyways. Uh, Another question. Uh, when will the next BCH meetup happen in San Francisco? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, is there interest in one? Somehow I got appointed like the leader of this thing. Like just suddenly, like I was invited to this like telegram group and it's like, Oh, by the way, you're, you're the new organizer. Like, uh, was it, was it Christian? Bitcoin cast? Uh, yeah. 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 He just like yeah. pulled me in there and he's like, <laughs> I, like he... I don't, I don't, I don't really know any, like, the few people I do know in San Francisco that are interested in Bitcoin Cash, like, we're not actively corresponding, so there's no, like, critical mass. And, oh, and to go back to critical mass, like, you need critical mass in all these things. Like, you need 
a group of people that's like 15 plus people to keep things going. And if you don't have that, the like critical social mass, uh, you know, there's a great Wikipedia article on it. You're, you're, you're treading water. Like you're depending upon specific individuals to like wear themselves out. Um, so like, yeah, if there's a, if there develops a critical mass in San Francisco, somehow people that want to get together, yeah, you know, we can do it. I'll organize it. There you go, Christian. Yeah. He, He's uh, kind of harassing me. I mean, harassing in a good way. That's about... good. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I love him. Like, yeah. No, he's it's a guy. Like, I'm glad he's doing that. But I just. I'm me about starting one. I don't even one... know who I would. Inv- yeah. I don't even know what I would do here. Like, yeah. About me starting one not... in, in Atlanta, I... which needs to happen because freaking BitPay is here. Like, so many like big companies, crypto companies are here that there is that critical mass. Yeah. Just, just I don't. Doing I, I'm a bad organizer. I suck at organizing stuff. Like, I'm just <laughs> terrible at it. Like, Somebody need, else needs to like. You need to be more of a dictator. Do this. I'll go to it. I'll <laughs> talk to people. I'll be nice. But I, I, I yeah, I can't organize for shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, let's see. I, I think I had another. We had another topic or two. Let me look at it real quick. And bah, 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 bah. Um, uh, there's some comment about a DAO. Like a DAOs, DAOs don't work. Like you need. You need people that are trained in the subject to correspond to come up with the best best ideas and, and implement them. And people in DAO aren't the best. Or it's a voting I system. So oh, like yeah, yeah, the yeah. voting. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Vo- yeah. So I voting in general die. does not work because you can't aggregate votes. Like you can a- like the wisdom of the crowds don't apply to binary decisions. There's no like. There's no, um, Yo, I can't lie. I'm feeling yeah, nice. Why? <laughs> soup donated to what is this? He said, can what do I see? He said, could I have Shama's babies? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you a baby. <laughs> it's plastic and about this big, but like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Super nerd. We we'll go to the like, arts and crafts store. I'll make one. <laughs> Thanks for this advice. Uh, uh, oh, here's a here's a hot topic. Uh, Avalanche. Uh, do you see it coming to Bitcoin Cash anytime soon? I know Amory um, has been seen favorable to it. Um, I don't know your thoughts just on on it in general. Not if it's going to come. I don't know if you have any thoughts on Avalanche as a pre consensus protocol. I think you call it. I, I I don't yeah I don't I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, I get into that if people want maybe for some other time, but yeah I don't I don't think two consensus mechanisms make sense. I think that uh, I think that the ideas that Avalanche were based on could work and be beneficial for merchants accepting zero comp, mm-hmm. um. Which is basically like, as you know, it's the the basic idea behind Avalanche is hypergeometric sampling. So you just like you pull a bunch of other nodes, and if you see a node that doesn't have the transaction or says that it doesn't want to accept the transaction or the transaction is invalid, at that point you say like, hey, I'm not going to accept this as a zero comp transaction. Um, and you do that based on some threshold given by a hypergeometric distribution. You um, uh, which is defined by the total number of nodes on the network, which you may not be able to get that number, but you can estimate it to some order of magnitude, which is all you need in order to make a reasonable uh, determination of whether a transaction is going to get included in the next block or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's from the merchant side. That's not as like a consensus level thing for Bitcoin Cash. Um, I also don't think that like, there's no staking mechanism for avalanche that makes sense. Right. Like proof of work doesn't make sense. Uh, like I, I would be happy to get into the details of like why there's all these small technical problems. And to be honest, I think that's why Omri has not published a spec or actually implemented it because he, he's aware of these technical problems and like all the solutions to them end up begging the question, right? You've just like moved the problem somewhere else in your solution. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's good old, good old answer right there. Does Avalanche help with scaling? Uh, no, it's more of a zero no, thing. It? Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with scaling. It's totally orthogonal to that. In fact, it might inhibit scaling quite a bit. Oh. Uh, because of the extra traffic that's required. Hmm. Didn't think of that one. Didn't think of that one. Um, is there a fork coming? Probably not. At Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> 
Uh, I, uh, I mean, there's one in scheduled oh, for uh, November, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I mean, like a, a scheduled hard fork. I mean, there's always... Yeah. There's one every six months. Thanks, Craig, right? A little, uh, yeah, you split your bankrupt. You're funny. Um, uh, let's see. We got any more questions out here? Um, I think uh, we went through kind of everything I wanted to go through. Um, let's see. If anything else funding-wise? Um, how's your day? Ah, it's great. Yeah, I'm doing good. You, you, got, you have work today? Real job? Yep. Wage yep. cutting? If you want to put it that way, I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, you dirty wage cook. You don't live off. You don't live off your sick crypto gains. What's wrong with you? You're not really. In crypto. I just don't. I like. I, I'm perfectly able to work. Like, why would I want to retire right now when I can do other fun stuff and get paid for it? There you Doesn't go. Make any sense? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, you have any questions for me? Uh, what is your favorite color? <laughs> oh God! Oh jeez! Uh, it actually has been green for a while, so I'm just gonna go with that. Um, uh, it's not orange. His, no, orange is. Uh, You're a heretic. I'm we're a gonna heretic. kill you now. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna God. get a bob. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna defenestrate you. We're gonna, I'm gonna throw you out the window here oh, in a Jesus. second. <laughs> right. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, says the guy with the green shirt on. Oh, Mark just entered chat. What's up? Nobody ever, nobody ever gave me an orange shirt. Like, what? you know what it is though. You know what it is though. It's the CIA agents that are trying to disrupt the branding. They published a bunch of, you know, they created a bunch of these green shirt logos, <laughs> and they gave them away to like mess with everybody's minds. <laughs> like the block stream shill they don't want us using orange so they made all these shirts and gave them away ah damn it, it's funny i've seen a lot of the core people they like support the green because it's like yeah different than it's, btc yeah. i mean that but that's true though like i really do support orange i think that bitcoin cash actually follows the you know uh is the ideological successor of bitcoin like it is bitcoin i wouldn't say that it's btc but like the branding and the logo should have should have came to Bitcoin Cash. Right, but it um, didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, uh, this guy says it will Avalanche will help scaling because no reason to translate the whole block anymore with Avalanche. Um, from my personal perspective, then if you have the whole block with Avalanche, what's the point of proof of work? If the miners Exactly. Can't choose... Like you shouldn't have two consensus mechanisms. Do Avalanche or do proof of work. Like but but Avalanche, I, I honestly I don't think that Avalanche will work. I think that Emin and his whole Avacoin thing, I, I don't think that it's going to turn out very well. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it might make it might make, it might make him a lot of money and good for him. <laughs> but like it's not it's not some crazy advancement that he's building it. Um, yeah, I mean I, I I saw him on Twitter the other day and he's just like building. Thanks for all these uh, BCH. Uh, he was saying how he created AvaCoin and then like he hasn't even like been advocating for it on BCH really. It's just like other people like trying to like put it in and he's just like, I don't care. Like I'm just doing my own coin. <laughs> so no. So the, no. this is the thing. Like yeah. people don't know. Like I, I don't know for sure. Cause I wasn't part of these discussions, but I'm fairly sure that M team actually got the idea from discussions that Omri and I had, uh, about because it's almost identical to something that Omri and I were talking about before, uh, which is you know we never came to certain solutions to problems uh, with the the, the actual um, what we had called Avalanche at the time. Like it's really convenient that it has the same name and like the paper yeah. came out like a few months after uh, we talked to Emin at uh, the Satoshi Vision conference. Like just weird. Yeah, that's funny. Stole your branding. You should sue them. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, the branding actually comes from Ripple because they have a they have a uh, consensus mechanism. They call it consensus, but they like in a video, the lead in like lead architect of Avalanche of of Ripple calls it like an avalanching process. Gotcha. So watch out for Brad. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's totally different though because they have trusted they have trusted nodes essentially right so. It, it, you know, you need a different actual polling mechanism than than what uh, than what Ripple uses. Gotcha. Yeah, it's yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of like 
the whole base of it like who's who decides right i mean that's it's the whole byzantine generals problem that bitcoin solved to begin with like yeah just completely changing it uh which one's strong but i'm not gonna get headed out uh let's see i believe in amory sachet somehow he will make it all right um yeah. oh I, I i like amory has my full faith and confidence like he's a wonderful engineer he's had some amazing ideas in the past like i don't i don't criticize him there at all mm. um yeah i guess we'll wrap this up here soon uh any last questions for for shah here um and my favorite color is green um i don't know if, if you're still advocating orange come on the consensus I, like, I think i think we should take over every symbol and color <laughs> like just all, everything is bitcoin cash so maybe like like pink too is what you're saying sure yeah just put it everywhere <laughs> sure bitcoin cash it's all of us yeah, i need to no, i need to find it because P- peter always so what we need is a rainbow bitcoin cash flag then it'll do very well in san francisco yeah that's true. diversity is our strength <laughs> diversity is our strength okay i need to find this thing by coins twice his old peter ryan uh he did a video with all the different um bitcoin cash logos so I'm gonna find it real quick. He he posts way too much on. I love Bcash. That's how I play for the kids I procure. Happy merchant. All right. <laughs> Somebody's just. <laughs> sending what is with these donations? Uh, like, where are these names coming from? I don't know. Like, do they actually have to have a YouTube account with this? No. Stuff? So like, it's oh yeah. So it's actually typical on cash. I didn't mention this. Uh, it's in the um, YouTube description. Um, it's completely trustless. Basically, you just put in your XPub, and then every new donation. Um, it sends to a new address, and it sends right. So it's like sends right to my Electron Cash, uh, Pox. But how do the, where do the messages come from? Is uh, that it, like part of that? Yeah, it's part of the. You just you put it in. And too. there's like an OBS plugin. Uh, yeah, it, so it goes through Streamlabs, so it's integrated oh, with cool. Streamlabs. Uh, but it's its own site, and then you can like, um, you can do a minimum donation. So I, I did like I think the minimum is I put like point oh five. I think that's what it was. No, point oh oh five or something. Anyways, it's like a dollar, uh, and so that's why everybody's sending me like a dollar and eleven cents. You need to raise those. Those are rookie numbers. You need like. I know, right? Well, nobody was sending me in the beginning, so I was like, eh. Yeah, see. You have a coke cokehead, <laughs> one one seven. Yes, thank he's you. He's got more money. Answer. Like, if he's a cokehead, he must be pretty wealthy. It costs a lot to buy coke. <laughs> that's like I don't know. That just. That's not a, okay. Like a dollar donation from a cokehead. <laughs> yeah, go buy. Yeah, come on. Uh, here's this is a, a good a good uh, meme right here. Let's see. Oh man, thirty second lag. Now I look like I'm copying you guys. BC, <laughs> not the diversity rainbow. Yeah, you, you copycat, Mark. Uh, all right, we got to find this somehow. Um, but this you thing. are copying me, Mark. You're you're a big copycat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Laura, for the spice. I just got the bag of spice. What what are those girls eating? Oh, like, it's peppers, what? bro. Is that chili peppers? Yeah, of course. I want to see them like start crying and throw up afterwards. <laughs> like, that's what I'm usually used to. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw my episode on Tuesday. I tried to get some hot wings from like Wingstop. And I got the I got the second hottest because like I'm kind of like a pussy when it comes to spice anyway, so I didn't want like completely yep. destroy myself. And so the top one is atomic, and the second one is like mango habanero. And I just put them bitches down like it was nothing. I was like, what the hell? Um, and in college, people were like, they had all these habaneros out in one of the student lounges, and they're like, hey, you want to join it in this like habanero eating contest? I'm like, nah, I'm good, <laughs> but I'll watch. And like they all start eating these things, and like just be like four of them just like hit the table get up and like run to the bathroom and start vomiting like i walked in after him i like this color T- titty color is that <laughs> cleavage. What? Cleavage. what color what color is that cleavage color <laughs> yeah we need we need cleavage colored logos then we'll really Dude. it'll take over the world at that point there you go developing and marketing <laughs> Uh, just turn into the, the the meme outro now. Okay, damn it, Peter, where is this damn video? 
I know everybody loves to watch be scrolling. It's very it's the most entertaining content you can get. That's why that's why I watch your live stream. <laughs> the be scroll scrolling. Through, scroll through memes. <laughs> Like I, I just can't get enough scrolling. Just man, like, I don't. You don't even don't have to do the scrolling. You, you like your. I don't, yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to exhaust the energy of like hitting my own <laughs> scroll wheel. I can literally just, I can just watch. It's uh, great. Uh, this is this funny. Bees, bro. Can, can I get somebody to like feed me too while I? <laughs> yeah. What do you think of SLP tokens? Uh, they're neat. Holy fuck. Like, I wish I wish they were like minor consensus tokens. I wish that we could like do uh, more, um, you know, like more covenants in script it's and uh, and have them that way. But SLP is cool. Like it's a really useful tool uh, for the time being. Uh, thank you, Super Nerd. He just donated me a full BCH. So awesome. Um, now you I... can eat today. Yes, I see. Here we go. Thank you. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. That music. Oh, see, that's a good logo right there. Yeah, I see all of them. That's <laughs> that's what we need. Oh, so my favorite color is um, the crisp, the Vin Armani color. <laughs> what good... color is that? It's Vin Armani color. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, right. Oh, the there's Omri color. That's, <laughs> yeah. We need that. We need a logo like that. <laughs> the the Gabriel color. Vin, there's the Omri color. So, uh, the sea color, the boat color, <laughs> the Asian girl color. <laughs> I like Asian girl color. That's, yeah, Asian. That's that's, color. that's what we should adopt is, is the Asian girl color. <laughs> we need to start an online petition to get Coin Market Cap and Coinbase to change <laughs> the logo to the Asian girl color. <laughs> uh, we have this overwhelming consensus. We have all voted. And, uh, yeah, everybody agrees. Everybody agrees this is the best marketing decision. <laughs> uh, what is this? Is that an Asian girl in the background? What the hell? <laughs> oh, look, I've donated. I sold my I hair to pay Amory. Oh, God, what did that say? I sold my hair to pay Amory. I'm going to check the. Let's see on YouTube. Um, oh, Puck, Puck, Puck. Puck. Yeah, he, he makes uh, me the most money. He is. He. Because. I sold my hair to Omri. Pineapple on pizza. No, pineapple on pizza is absolutely a terrible idea. I don't. In fact, I yeah, I don't know. I think we need to round up an online mob now for like merely suggesting that pineapple should be on pizza. <laughs> we got quite dark in this room. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, donation said I sold all my hair to in, <laughs> to give to Omri, <laughs> and it's yeah. still still underfunded. <laughs> Yeah. Damn. All of it. They're like <laughs> I have like a couple of hairs back here somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up on YouTube. Uh, if you want to still hang out and chat, uh, I'm good with that. But we're reaching an hour on YouTube. I try to keep it under there. But I'm going to hop over to D Live and keep streaming if you want to sure. keep hanging out. Uh, that's cool. So, yeah, everybody, sorry we're, I'm going away from YouTube because uh, people are going to want to watch this later and they might not watch it if it's like an hour and a half. So, uh, go to D Live. Um, but thank you if you're watching this. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. And um, bye-bye to YouTube.